Hi, in this video, I'll quickly unbox the Sony FE 50mm f2.8 macro lens and demonstrate how I plan to use it for product photos and close-up YouTube shots. When recording videos, the lens do make audible clicks, whirls, or buzzing when autofocusing. So I'll share a tip for minimizing the noise. I'll be shooting items like camera gear, keyboards, and toys with this macro lens and provide examples of the image quality it can achieve. Do you stay tuned for a hands-on look at this lens? So let's begin. Let's quickly unbox this 50mm f2.8 macro lens for Sony. I bought this lens primarily for macro photography of items I'm selling online. Also, I'll be using it for close-up clips in my YouTube videos. Read list literatures back into the box. And here's the lens. Let's take a close-up look at it. This lens is surprisingly small and light for a macro lens, making it a great choice for traveling and everyday carrying. Focus hold button. Focus range limiter switch. I'll be testing each range. There are full range, 0.3 meter to infinity, which means it can focus in that range, and 0.16 to 0.3 meter. When they label the range from large to small, which means focusing from the furthest to the closest. I'll be showing you how all that works. The lens has a clean and uncluttered design with a smooth cylindrical body. It says that it has dust and moisture resistant construction. Front filter thread is 55 millimeters and minimum focus distance is 0.16 meter or 0.53 foot. I would love to mainly use it on autofocus, but I'll test manual focus too. Rubber ring, good in cold temperature. Focus hold button, you can program that to be something else. So to protect this lens, I have this Tiffin filter, digital ultra clear. Now adding any extra glass in front of the macro lens has the potential to degrade image quality. That said, a high quality clear or UV filter should not significantly impact image quality on most modern macro lenses. Who could resist the urge to immediately start shooting with a brand new lens? I just enjoy the process of integrating any new lens into my photography. This is going to be the very first miniature model for this lens. The autofocus works. The camera's autofocus seems drawn to the Grim Reaper's eyes. This lens is known for its distinctive autofocus noise. You could hear the buzzing, the grinding, the clicking. For video recording, I will show you later how to minimize the noise. But first, let's take a listen. I just noticed the red liquid in the eye socket and on the cheek. First time noticing it since I got it. I like that it has an ability to reveal hidden worlds and capture incredible detail in close-up shots. You can see focusing distance and magnification scale is printed on the top. I'll go into details about that. And when you turn off the camera, it will retract. Here, I'll use a recorder to let you see how well it can focus. This toy model is completely stationary subject. It should be easy for this camera to analyze the face and lock focus without a problem. Even though this cartoony toy model has exaggerated non-human eyes, the eye autofocus system is advanced enough to recognize the eyes as eye-shaped objects and focus on them. When you focus on a closed subject with this lens, 
the lens barrel telescopes outward automatically to allow closer focusing distances while maintaining image quality. No worries, tips on minimizing the noise is later in the video. Have a look at the barrel of the lens again. When I get really close, it will extend. When I move back, the lens barrel retracts. Now let's have a closer look at the focus range limiter switch which allows you to constrain the usable focus range. There are three ranges using which depends on how close the subject is away from the lens. For example, the green dinosaur is about 0.6 meter or 24 inches away from the front of the lens. So that's why I switched to the 0.3 meter to infinity range. However, if the subject is closer than the near limit, the lens may not be able to focus at all, as you can see here. So you would have to adjust the limit range appropriately for the subject distance. In this case, it should be 0.16 to 0.3 meter range. And no problem focusing here. Let's take a look at the autofocus performance of this lens. It's generally good autofocus. Sony's autofocus system is known for its speed and accuracy, and this lens generally benefits from this. Notice this lens do exhibit focus breathing. You can see the field of view around the frame. Look at the background. It changes slightly as it focuses, but it still focuses quickly and confidently. Notice focus breathing. It's like you're zooming in and zooming out when you're not doing that at all. It can focus quickly and confidently in good lighting conditions. Make sure you're using the focus range limiter switch on an appropriate range. One more autofocus test at f2.8. Foreground, background. That was quite quick. Right here, I'm going to hover the lens about a foot above the pullback cars. So I would have to switch to 0.3 meter to infinity range. Notice when I get in closer than a foot, it's out of focus because I'm not in that range. So I have to switch to 0.16 meter to 0.3 meter range. 
Now it is focusing perfectly. As you know, this lens does not have built-in image stabilization. I often take detailed close-up photos of gadgets and items to sell online. Getting crisp, clear shots that show off all the details really helps the item stand out. Up until now, I have been using a standard 24 prime lens, but that can be limiting when I need to get really close to a small object. So I finally invested in this dedicated macro lens. And let me tell you, it has been a game changer. I had never gotten the level of sharpness and fine details like these. It's perfect for taking photos of electronics, jewelry, watches, and any tiny parts I want to highlight. Another huge benefit of this macro lens is that I can use it to film crisp, detailed close-up footage for my YouTube videos. Moving on. Again, this lens makes noise. So let's take a listen one more time and I'll show you how to minimize it. So one way to minimize the noise is to use the lavalier mic. So plug in the lavalier mic, then place it further away from the lens to reduce the noise. Or place it away from the lens and near the object you want to be heard. You could also hide it from the frame. Or you can use a wireless system. And make sure you adjust the audio record level on your camera. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And maybe stopping down or decreasing the aperture to get everything in focus and stop the lens hunting when in autofocus. And hopefully you have good lighting. Since this lens does not have built-in image stabilization, you need steadier hands to avoid camera shake blur. Or you can use Catalyst Browse to help out. Let's now take a look at what it's like to use manual focus on this lens. Here at 1 to 1 magnification, the word Sony on the camera sensor will be as big as it is in real life. Just imagine how close you'd have to be with your normal eyes to see all those details. So with 1 to 1 magnification lens, you can capture this level of detail without getting super close. Now let's try 1 to 1.4 magnification ratio. A 1 to 1.4 magnification ratio means that the lens can reproduce the subject at slightly smaller scale than its actual size. In this case, the word Sony captured on the sensor will be 0.71 times or 1 divided by 1.4, the size of the actual subject. Now trying at 1 to 2 magnification ratio, or 1 divided by 2, or 1 half. This means the word Sony captured on the sensor will be half the size of the word Sony in real life. As you may have noticed, I have been moving the camera back 
accordingly based on what is marking on the lens barrel. For this magnification ratio, it would need to be within 0.63 foot or 0.19 meter. Now trying at 1 to 4 magnification ratio and I would need to be within 0.92 foot, almost a foot or 0.28 meter. Again, I would need to move the camera almost one foot away. The word Sony projected onto the camera sensor is one-fourth of the actual size of the word Sony in real life. You could see here the distance between the front of the lens and the lens cap is about within a foot, which is within the range limit of 0.16 meter to 0.3 meter or 6.3 inches to 11.8 inches or almost a foot. Well, that's pretty much all I have in this video. Thank you for watching. Do come back for the next video.